Hey, what's up chemistry folks? We've got a few last problems here. These are short and sweet and no math involved. Woo! We're just gonna look at some qualitative examples here in terms of the movement of heat energy either into or out of a system. As you look at question number 14, it says on a sunny winter day, the snow on a rooftop begins to melt. Wow, such a great, great story. As the melted water drips from the roof, it refreezes into icicles. Describe the direction of heat flow as the water freezes. Is this process endothermic or exothermic? Okay, now I really like to draw a diagram, plus I'm really a very talented artist and just like to show off my amazing art skills. But I think drawing these images often will help you understand what's going on with the direction of heat flow. So I've got this water that's sort of dripping down, dripping down, dripping, dripping down, and then boom, icicle. And so then just ask yourself, do I have to put heat in? Would I have to add heat in order to get the water to refreeze? No, I have to take heat out. Heat will have to be given off in order for the water to refreeze. So this process is exothermic. Number 15, a container of melted wax stands at room temperature. What is the direction of heat flow as liquid wax solidifies? Is the process endothermic or exothermic? Okay, so here's my beautiful picture of a puddle of wax with my little candle flame that I'm just gonna blow out. <sighs> okay, now we have just a little puddle of wax and we want to know what's going on with the heat flow in order for the liquid wax to solidify. Again, if I add heat, is that gonna get it to solidify? Answer, no. If I take heat out, is that gonna get it to solidify? Answer, yes. So again, we have an exothermic process here. Okay, let's take a quick look at question number 16. It says, when barium hydroxide octahydrate is mixed in a beaker with ammonium thiocyanate, a reaction occurs. The beaker becomes very cold. Is the reaction endothermic or exothermic? Boom, artwork by Boylan. Okay, so let's ask ourselves, if this were exothermic, heat would be given off and our hand would feel hot. The beaker would feel hot, but it doesn't, it feels cold, which means that heat must be absorbed or taken in. And therefore, this is an endothermic process. Okay, as we look at number 17, it says two substances in a glass beaker chemically react and the beaker becomes too hot to touch. Is the reaction endothermic or exothermic? Again, let's think about this. If it's exothermic, heat is being given off. A bunch of heat is being given off. It's gonna become too hot to touch. Exothermic, boom, we are done. 